Hey everyone, and welcome to this 67th episode of Friday Fruit Clips. I'm so very glad that you stopped by. Now for those of you who are new, please do not forget to subscribe. It is required as you can see, but you shouldn't do it just for that. Now I can't say for sure, but I've heard that many people in the past who have subscribed, well, they've experienced great joy and happiness. So why not take a chance and hit that subscribe button and just roll with it. There you go. Feels pretty good, right? All right. So Friday Fruit Clips is my cutting edge, critically acclaimed and award-winning weekly YouTube series where I expose the false prophets, the false teachers, those who would corrupt the word of God. And have I mentioned that it's award-winning, just so many awards. But let's go ahead and take a look at our banner scripture, Ephesians 5.11, and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of uh, darkness, but rather reprove them. Now that means to expose them, and that's what we're going to do here today. Now as you're watching my video here, I'm going to show you some pretty silly fruity clips from these scam artists, these frogs, and you may experience a pretty wide range of emotions like anger, frustration, but you also might find yourself, well, laughing a little bit because some of this is just that silly and these false prophets are ridiculous. I just want you to know it's okay, folks. You can laugh a little bit because if you don't, sometimes well, you just might go a little bit crazy. So if you have successfully subscribed and you're ready, Go ahead and throw some Jiffy Pop popcorn on the stove and grab yourself a big gulp. Sit down in that bean bag because we're getting ready to kick the door down here. You ready to do this? All right, let's go. All right, so first up, we're looking at well, Prophet Tough Guy, Kent Christmas, right? He's a confirmed false prophet who has no fear of the living God. We're going to be looking at this video right here. You can see the title, Kent Christmas Prophetic Summit from September of 22. This is two years ago. So let's watch a couple of clips. And what I'm going to do here is point out how Kent just told a bunch of lies and then said that God said all this. Let's go ahead and roll that first clip. So this night I say unto thee uh, that I am releasing an Elijah anointing on my prophets, uh, that no longer will it be personal prophecy that moves men, uh, but it will be the corporate, thus saith the Lord, uh, that I am releasing to the atmosphere by the power of God. All right, so apparently in September of 2022, God was going to release the Elijah anointing he goes out into the atmosphere or something. Anyone? Did anyone experience this anointing? And of course the answer is no. But it sounded good though, right? People cheered and clapped. Corporate prophecy. Well folks, this is just nonsense. This is what Kent Christmas does. He's an actor. Right now he's on a stage and he's doing theater stuff. Of course it always helps when you can speak like this and act as though God was on his last nerve and he had just infiltrated Tim and Dutch Sheets' church to speak through Kent Christmas. See how silly that is? Or should I say, see how easy that is? Of course, it doesn't hurt Ken that he just looks like the raging, what, the Incredible Hulk, right? Filled with anger all the time. Anyway, uh, sorry. Let's go ahead and listen to that next clip. The Lord says that I'm going to empty the churches, and I am emptying the churches of lukewarm. But God says I'm not going to kill them. I'm going to give them back to the world. And what they've done to the church, they're going to do to the devil's kingdom. You know, one of the most astonishing aspects about Ken Christmas is that he absolutely hates the lost, and he hates the lukewarm. Now, it is widely known that at least a couple of times a year, Ken Christmas calls down death upon the lukewarm or some scheme where God is just going to punish the lukewarm. He's merciless. In fact, this guy has zero mercy for anyone that's lost or lukewarm. 
you can check out my other uh, Friday Fruit Clips. He, I, I've covered this on many different stages. He hates the gospel of Jesus Christ, and he offers no room for mercy. Let's keep going. Getting ready to see in the next few months is not the harvest, but I am resurrecting the harvesters. I am resurrecting men and women that the enemies tried to kill. Hear me say it, God, tonight I lose divine healing in this building by the power of the Holy Ghost. Every mocking spirit of infirmity, of sickness, I bind you in the name of the Lord, and I command you to exit this building in the name of Jesus. Just as I healed the Israelites when they marched out of Egypt, so do I loose a wave of divine healing from side to side in the name of the Lord by the power power of God. You will not be feeble. You will not be decrepit. It doesn't matter if you're old. I will give you a preservation. I'll put the spirit of Caleb on you until you rise and say I can run through a troop and leap over a wall. I loose hallelujah a release of the anointing of God upon you. Woo, look at him go. Now Kent is certainly a talented reformer. No doubt about it. The Sheets boys paid him to appear here. And boy, he worked that crowd into a frenzy. But nothing of these alleged divine healings, or at least on the scale that he was allegedly prophesying, none of this happened. Also note that Kent, the actor, well, he went hard for almost 30 minutes with this nonsense. This man loves receiving that applause even though there's absolutely no payoff. Uh, the people love it. Sadly, these people, well, they were content with just his performance. Absolutely none of them followed up or even held Kent Christmas accountable for these lies. And that's the thing, folks. They never hold them accountable. They're simply there for the entertainment of it all. They love getting their itching ears tickled. But he's not done. Let's keep watching. Even as my servant said, there, there are angels coming. Uh, know this, saith God. Uh, I have already given the nod to an avenging angel called the death angel. I am loosing him in the earth to remove those who offend uh, and commit iniquity uh, in the body of Christ. Uh, for this will not be a mixed movement. All right, so it's a widely known fact that no Kent Christmas prophecy would be complete without the proverbial loosing of the death angel <laughs> to come and kill all of the enemies of Kent Christmas. <laughs> In this case, Kent's God has even given the nod to this death angel. That's right, Kent's God looked across the room just as this death angel was looking back at Kent's God. And of course, he gave him the nod. And the death angel knew it was go time. So he grabbed his bag of swords and sickles, and he flew down to earth to carry out his campaign of death disbursement. This is getting really good. Keep it going, Kent. Please keep it going. I'm almost at frenzy overload. Your leaders will not fall into adultery. They will not sit in their offices and watch pornography. Now, the irony here is just off the scale. Your leaders will not fall to adultery. Uh, does somebody want to tell Kent about Robert Morris or maybe Chris Reed or maybe the many, many others? And again, only saying this because it serves to point out the fact that Kent Christmas falsely prophesied. All right. Just a couple more folks, hang in there with me. Sunday. God said, I'm gonna break the spirit of racism. <laughs> Hallelujah. The Lord says, I'm breaking debt off of tithers. In the name. I say to thee, it will not be a dark season that this move of the Lord is going to happen. It will be a season of victory and joy. There will not be lack in the house of the Lord. For the next three years, saith God, 
I'm going to so stop the march of the devil that he will be stopped dead in his tracks. I'm going to bring freedom and joy and abundance to the nations. For this is not a time of the devil. This is not a revival of the underground, but this is a revival of the glory of God. So get ready, says the Lord. There is a shout of release of the power. Oh boy. Oh dear. That's okay. I'm at my limit. That's about all I could take of Kent Christmas. What a performance this has been. So Kent God said, well, he's breaking racism and yeah. Okay. Breaking racism. And also he's breaking debt. Oh, but only for the tithers. Boy, what a grift that is. Imagine this level of evil. The only one who benefits from that grift is, well, let me see. Oh, yeah, Kent Christmas. He's the beneficiary of that prophecy. But you got to just be so happy for Kent, right? He also said that the next three years, there'll be victory and joy and no lack in the church. How's that been working? In fact, uh, he said the march of the devil was supposed to be well stopped. Now, has anybody experienced that? What a joke. This man is such an atrocious liar. So, by the way, this was supposed to happen to all nations. Now, granted, it's only been two years. Remember, this was from September of 2022. One year left, but see, the prophecy was for the next three years. So, as this angry man stands up on stage and puts out his performance, he is wrecking people. He's absolutely destroying the faith of multitudes worldwide as this gets spewed out all over the internet. And you see, that's the damage. Guys like this who speak things in the name of God that God has not spoken. And when these blessings, blessings, blessings don't come, well, people get discouraged and they do one of two things. Either they conclude that God doesn't love them or they conclude that God's not real. And they quietly shipwreck their faith and they walk away from God because of the words of Kent Christmas. This is why false prophets are among the most dangerous in the world. This is why they're so terribly evil. Let me show you something. We're in the book of 2 Peter chapter 2, starting verse 1. But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privily shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them, and shall bring upon themselves swift destruction. And many shall follow their pernicious ways, by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. Watch this. And through covetousness shall they with feigned words make merchandise of you, whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not, their damnation slumbereth not. It's perfectly described somebody like Kent Christmas. He's got very talented words. They're feigned, they're evil, they're deceptive, and he makes merchandise of many, many people. By speaking things, he says, come from God, but really they come from his own evil heart. God did not speak through Kent Christmas there. And so at this point, while we conclude this segment, we certainly want to continue to mark and avoid this man and stay away from him. So with that, let's move on to our next segment. All right, so next up, I've got a little segment here where we're going to refute Daniel Adams. This is a video. It's a very short clip by uh, this particular channel. And I just came across this, so I'm going to play this clip. And we're just going to, like I said, do a real quick rebuttal to Daniel Adams, who is an absolute scam artist. So listen to what he says here, and then we'll comment. We'll say, well, Christians can't have demons. Yes, they can. Jesus owns the house, but sometimes squatters like to get in there because we let them in by doing crazy things. All right, folks, so let's refute this. Boy, I'm, I'm going to try to be nice here. Daniel Adams says that Christians can be possessed by demons. He says Jesus owns the house. But sometimes squatters like to get in there because we let them in by doing crazy things. Now, folks, this man is breathtakingly biblically illiterate. It's also one of the dumbest statements I've ever heard anybody make. 
By the way, can somebody quote me the verse where we can learn about squatter demons? Uh, and of course, the answer is no. Now, he deceives here. He's very deceitful. And let me show you how. When he says Jesus owns the house, what does that sound like to you? It makes it sound like Jesus is absent, like he's far away, almost like a landlord, right? But folks, the reason demons can't get in, right? They can't possess you and become squatters. Well, it's because, well, guess what? You're indwelt by the Holy Spirit. No demon squatter, as Daniel says, can live in us in the presence of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will not share the temple, nor will a demon be able to live in their, you know, what, side by side with the Holy Spirit. It's atrocious. He's a liar and a blasphemer. But here's why Daniel says this kind of stuff. Do you want to know why? Because this is his money source. He's counting on the fact that most Christians are not well versed in the Bible. Therefore, gullibility is the friend of Daniel Adams. He will continue to make millions as long as he can convince Christians that they can be possessed by demons. Now, of course, I'm not talking about the fact that demons certainly can attack you, oppress you, target you. Uh, we know that that happens all the time. We constantly battle. But possession, absolutely not. Daniel Adams, folks, still one of the most evil men out there, period. And let's take a look at this. In 1 Corinthians chapter 3, let's look at verse 16. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you? Now, do you think that God's going to share that temple with demons? Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Scroll down to, let's see, verse 19. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own? What a great verse, right? In the book of Romans, chapter 8, let's go to verse 9. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. If so be that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you, or dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. The Spirit of God dwells in you. He dwells in me. And he does not share this room or this temple with demons. My goodness. Okay, with that, let's move on. All right, so next up, we are looking at Apostle Barnabas from Apostle Barnabas Ministries. Now, this guy is from Botswana. And this one might be, well, quite shocking for some. I came across this guy in my research, and I've taken the liberty to put together a little montage, some clips from his video library. I'm going to play this montage, and again, I want to warn you, this might be a little hard to watch for some, uh, but we want to show this in order to expose this guy and to point out how utterly unbiblical and, well, abusive this guy is. So you've been warned. Let's watch the clip and then we'll come back and comment on the other side. So the spirit is coming from there. Yes. Okay. So thank you. Where are you? Okay. In Jesus' name, go. Thank you, Lord. Come on. Take this anointing. That's the truth. Okay. Yes. Ancestral spirits. Yeah, come here, come here. Jesus. Go. So much for coming. He will do something. Okay. Mm, thank you. Come on. Go. Okay. Check out. Check out. Check out. Go. 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 So 
your spiritual husband, we don't have time. Go, 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 go. Thank you, Jesus. This is a spirit of witchcraft. So yeah, a little hard to watch and certainly quite disturbing. Folks, this is not Christian. This is not biblical. It's not true deliverance. This guy clearly gets off on abusing people and slapping people. It's not right. And I certainly want to do what I can do to call this out to people's attention. If you're in any type of organization or a church where the pastor or the leaders are slapping or hitting you, flee. Get out. Walk out immediately and seek a different church. All right. And so what I wanted to do was just a quick segment here exposing this and certainly mark this guy and avoid him at all costs. And anyone like it, quite frankly, again, if anybody's slapping you, all right, it's time to leave. So, all right. So with that, let's move on to the next segment. All right, folks. So rounding off the program today, we've got Heidi Baker. Heidi Baker is a very popular actress who is known for getting drunk in the spirit and also being affiliated with the likes of, well, Kenneth Copeland. Now, I was watching one of her latest performances. Here it is. And uh, she went into her tongues act, part of the show. And, well, I want you to listen because maybe you can tell me if I'm hearing really what I'm hearing. Now, I do want to give you a potential warning of language, so you have been warned. But let's go ahead and roll this clip, and I will meet you on the other side. Thank you, Jesus. Let's just worship. Yes, Jesus, we love you, Lord. We love you. We love you. We love you so much, Jesus. Only you, only you can do such amazing things through our little lives laid at your feet, God. It's you, it's you, it's you, it's you. We love you, Jesus. Let's just lift up our voices to him. Let's just start to sing in the spirit. Oh, from the back to the front, just start lifting your voices. Just start to sing in the spirit. Think of all that he is and all that he's done. And just think of the grace, the great grace. Oh, Riataya. Kiriaye. Kiriaye. Rae. Shiriaye. Shiriaye. So, well, there it is. That's it. That's the clip. Now, if you can get past the cringe of all this, and yes, what seems to be like questionable tongues language, it's all just performance, isn't it? You could almost call this tongues theater with Heidi Baker. Heidi loves to be on stage, receiving the attention from everyone in the audience. But let me ask you an honest question. Does this seem orderly? But does it seem biblical? It really doesn't. It seems like Heidi always wants, you know, the audience to think that she's the most holy. She's the most spiritual, you know, but I truly believe it's all just theater. So I just want to point this out. And um, that's what Heidi does, though. Uh, again, she's known for her being drunk in the spirit and her wild stories. It's just also cringe. And so I just want to point this out. Beware of tongues theater. And so with that, let's take a look at some scripture. In the book of 1 Corinthians, we're in chapter 14. Let's start in verse 37. 
If any man think himself to be a prophet or spiritual, let him acknowledge that the things that I write unto you are the commandments of the Lord. But if any man be ignorant, let him be ignorant. Wherefore, brethren, come to prophesy and forbid not to speak with tongues. But look at verse 40. Let all things be done decently and in order. And, you know, when I watch Heidi, I don't see that. I don't get that at all. Nevertheless, she should also not be usurping authority over men. And so with that, I'm going to wrap things up on that segment. And there you go. All right, folks, before we close things up on this episode, we're throwing in a bonus clip. Take a look at this guy, Kenneth Lee Spears, ladies and gentlemen. Oh! Now, Kenneth Lee Spears, one of the greatest, most diabolical potato wizards on social media today. Here he is. Kenny here hates the Jews. And Kenneth Lee also has a history of attacking women, children, and military vets. We've got everything documented. Kenneth Lee Spears also claims to be, I'm not kidding, the black horse rider of Revelation. <laughs> and of course, most of you know that this man has attacked my wife, cursing her with breast cancer. That's also documented. He tries to wheeze a lot of that, but and he has made a community post. We're going to try to help this guy out today, but more so we want to point this out so that if there is anybody out there listening to him, flee from this guy. So let's take a look at one of his latest posts. Here it is, and we'll start right at the top. He says, it was never known until I, the Lord's true prophet, revealed how the horns brought down the walls of Jericho. Of course, this is all comical. It's laughable. None of this can he prove. But look at the part that I have highlighted here. They used seven of the magical breastplate crystal stones from Exodus 28. Now, what Christian, what follower of Christ would ever describe the breastplates, you know, that the priests used from Exodus 28, as containing magical crystal stones? Well, Kenneth Lee Spears, that's who. What an absolute dolt and a blasphemer for wording it like this. So, Kenny, if you're listening, I want to educate you a little bit. God does not use magic, uh, nor does he need to. My Father, our God, the God of the Bible, he is the glory and the power. He doesn't use magic or need magic, you absolute blasphemer. And it is so very apparent to any follower of Christ that God throughout Scripture, forbids the use of magic. In the book of Revelation, we are in chapter 21. Let's start in verse 8. But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and what? Sorcerers. Now, if we click on this, we can come down. We can find this word sorcerers and we can look at Strong's and look how it describes Sorcerer, those a magician, those who use magic. Uh, they're going to get their place in the lake of fire, right? So for you to come out and even say that God uses magic or that uh, the stones of the priestly breastplates uh, are magic crystals, it's just so biblically illiterate, absurd. And I, I think that you did this on purpose because you're a witch. You're an open practitioner of witchcraft and now clearly a blasphemer. Now, one more thing that we want to point out as long as we're talking about Kenny Lee Spears is this right here. Kenneth Lee Spears has a video. It's still up on his channel. In this video, he prophesies that God told him that Nancy Pelosi indeed is the false prophet to the Antichrist as written about in the book of Revelation. Now. Kenneth has tried to distance himself from this because he knows he's false. And he says, well, Nancy Pelosi is a false prophet. But that's not what he actually put in his video. He said that Nancy Pelosi is the false prophet to the Antichrist from the book of Revelation. 
And it's laughable. It's absolutely laughable. And again, he's trying to distance himself, but we're not going to let him get away with this. So you shouldn't either. This man is an atrocious, blaspheming, false prophet. And again, a practitioner of witchcraft. So certainly we want to continue to mark this guy and avoid him as he makes his living cursing other people and not trying to spread the gospel. Kenneth Lee Spears, ladies and gentlemen, avoid him and mark him. Let's wrap it all up. All right, folks. Well, that's going to do it for this 67th episode of Friday Proof Clips. I can't believe it. Another episode in the can. As always, I want to ask you to please remember to pray for those who are caught up in the delusion of following these false prophets, these false teachers. Also pray for the false prophets. Here at DB34, we don't want anyone lost eternally, so please remember to pray for them. And if you'd like to partner with my ministry, you certainly can. Go right down into the description. There's a couple of different ways you can do that, including becoming a Patreon member, if you would like, and I sure do appreciate it. All right, so, yes, again, here we are on our way out. My staff is over at the door. They want to get out of here. Apparently, there's a new joint that opened up over in Eau Claire. We can go get a delicious fish fry. And why not? It's Friday. So, the wife is here. We're ready to go. I'm shutting down the lights, setting the alarm, and we are ready to get out of here. So, as we depart... As always, I want to leave you with one final piece of advice, if I could, and that is to always remember to stay fruity. All right, folks, we'll see you next week. God bless. Take care. Watch this. Add some colored hair. If you don't have hair, then have it painted on your head. I promise you, you will draw a crowd. Because they'll think, this has got to be the most fun person on this earth. I got to hear them. (laughs) 